another thing that confuses the hell out of me. So in the interest of, you know, fairness and justice, and I keep hearing this every time I watch this case, and I, and I watched the YNW Melly case, and, and this happened a lot too. Explain this in the legal process, the, the, the overall sense. If I'm a defense attorney and I said, hey, there's something that went gravely wrong here. I'm doing a motion for mistrial, especially if I think the judge is a part of it or their ruling is a part of it. Why is that same judge the person to grant me a mistrial? Because I like play this. If I'm operating on bad faith, I'm not going to hold myself accountable and say mistrial. Like, you know, like that to me, I'm wondering why there isn't another oversight body immediately that you could ask for the mistrial. Because if I'm Judge Glanville, yeah, I had this ex parte conversation. Fuck if it's legal. It's legal to me. Fuck your, you got to get this back on appeal. You're not going to get a mistrial now, which the whole point of a mistrial is, is supposed to be in the moment. If, if you realize that this trial is tainted. So I guess legally, why do they have to ask that same judge who, if they thought it was going to be a mistrial, they would have held, probably held themselves accountable, but they're not going to hold themselves accountable if a defense attorney asked them. Part of it's a practical matter, right? Like how many resources do we have to have oversight and somebody, you know, go and respond every time somebody wants to say, oh, my trial judge is not giving me a proper mistrial. So as a practical matter, that immediate second level of review, we just don't have the resources for it. Judges, as they, you see how long cases take, this shit takes forever. Yeah. Now, there will be a process. You know, we will see how quickly it comes in. You'll recall in the Trump trial, when Fonnie Willis asked to, when they asked to have Fonnie be, recu be recused from the case for a conflict, the judge said, no, I'm not going to force her to be recused. They went, they filed the notice of appeal, and after a couple of days, the appeals court said, stop that case. We've got an appeal. We're looking at it. And that case is going to stop until we decide this appeal. So mm. that, that's something that's going to be in play here in the YSL case. Well, well, is that just Trump privilege? Because we could talk about Trump trials where it's like, I'm going to be honest with you. I've never seen a guy go through trial this quickly. And well, I mean, since it hasn't happened yet, but like a lot of the things with Trump seems very expedited. Most other things seems like we'll get to it when we get to it. Yeah. Again, this is this is a concerned citizen asking about the legal process. Like, should I even look at look at the YNW Millie case? I look at the Tory Lanez case. Like, there's so many damn questions. Um, anyway, l l let's completely wrap this YSL thing up. Okay. So now the judge says, give me the fucking person who told you tell me the snitch snitch on the snitch yeah okay if you're brian Steele, are you doing it um be honest I i'm not brian Steele. i know i know <laughs> if, so if you're asking if i'm the man that brian Steele is yeah. then then i'm doing it but but i am if, if, if you're in a, if you're the attorney for and, and let's forget the relationship or, or the star power that jeffrey williams aka young thug holds if you're representing a, a client that you know you, you know maybe decently well, but you could tell it, it feels like something doesn't smell right here, but they're also asking for who is it, and and also I was thinking about it. Does it matter that much if he did say who it was? I'm, I'm kind of confused on that point too. I'm not sure that it matters so much. I think I think for Brian, it's a matter of consistency. And that he reads the law a certain way and he knows he's right and so he wants to be consistent in it. And but his point is that the law prohibits me from disclosing this information to you because I obtained this information in the course of working on my client's defense. And the stuff that I work on for defending my client, I don't have to tell you guys. That's my work. It's privileged. And I have an absolute right to have that protected. And so for Brian, he can't do things that are convenient or he can't do things that are going to make him feel better in the moment. He does things with his conviction and mm. his understanding of what the law is. And, that, and I would like to think that if I'm ever in that situation, that I would follow my convictions too. What ends up happening, it, well, a couple of things. First, judge sends the, the sheriff up there to go and arrest Brian because he won't tell him. 
and Steel <laughs> start trying to take Steel's notes. Steel's like, no, 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 you can't take my notes. Sheriff's like, that was like an interesting thing. <laughs> That's great, man. Yo, we never saw Steel in cups, by the way, too. Yo, you saw you saw the judge is like, I'm gonna give you five minutes. Think about it and come back. He's like, I don't need five minutes. The judge walked out, and Steel's still up there ripping. He's, you know, what Steel said. Steel said, I heard that in that meeting, Copeland admitted to a murder. That's not Brady material. If if your star, what's Brady material? I've heard this word so many times. What's Brady material? I think it's a it's a Georgia statue or case law or something like that. Well, what is it though? Brady is a famous. It's the it's the name of a it's the last name of a defendant, a criminal defendant whose case went all the way up to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court issued a ruling. I believe it was Brady versus the State of Maryland, where the Supreme Court said that under the Constitution. The government has an obligation to provide defendants with any information in their possession that exonerates the defendants, that shows the defendant's innocence. Ooh. So if you're charged with something and somebody else is saying that they did it, or if you're charged with something and somebody else is the witness in the case against you, but that witness is making all these inconsistent statements. On Monday, he said the light was red, and on Tuesday, he said the light was green then the state has an obligation to disclose that to you. That, hey, we were talking to this guy. He said this. And on Tuesday, he said that. L let me give an example and tell me if it fits that. Okay. Hey, we charged you for the murder of a guy at a um, Shell gas station. Um, we arrested you because people says you fit the description. That's why we arrested you. Someone said they seen someone with the same hair as you. Later on, now we're we're in the legal process because like we've got to know that type of stuff. Then somehow we get the surveillance tape. It's not you. However, rather than provide you through discovery with the surveillance tape, we're just going to act like it doesn't exist and continue to prosecute you off of what everybody else oh, said. That's a textbook Brady violation. It would be okay. immediate reversal if people found out they had the tape and didn't give it up. Oh, okay, okay. All right. Okay. So Steele's up there. The The judges walked off. The sheriff's trying to grab his notes, and he's still like, hey, I heard Copeland said this. That's Brady. Give me that. And they... they Copeland admitted to a murder? Apparently. Allegedly? That's what Steele, Steele said that it was relayed to him that in that meeting, Copeland admitted to a murder. Why doesn't the judge say, all right, hey, we'll, we'll put out a transcript immediately to, I, to, to debunk I, that? I, 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 I can only imagine that the judge is thinking that the judge is right, that there is undue uh, influence or illegal interference from the defense on the witness, and so we have to do all this in secret. And, and listen, act. that's a heavy burden. Before you can say that the defense engaged in witness intimidation, you got to have something. What I heard from Miss Love is, oh, well, Mr. Melnick went up there and Mr. Melnick said that he's pleading the fifth and then Mr. Copeland said that I'm, I'm going to testify and then when Mr. Melnick was walking back to his table, he kind of looked at the defense attorneys and said, I tried. That, what, is, what the fuck does that's not un, that's not witness coercion like that i don't oh, know what that is okay okay all right so, so, right love was basically suggesting that oh they're all in cahoots because after you said that all right copeland is going to testify melnick turned around and went like this wait what is that doesn't mean anything hey I, i'm telling you this juncture for anybody who's paying attention reminds me a lot of the whole meg and tory case but we're talking about kelsey here where now people there's some minds who believe Kelsey was coerced maybe by Tory, right? Where they were like, hey, you know she's being coerced because when she's on the stand, they said, hey, who paid for your lawyer? She says, let me think about that. I don't remember, <laughs> which is like, <laughs> if you don't remember who paid for your lawyer, it's like, come on, right? And <clears throat> I think on Tory's side, they feel the same thing happened which is probably even more uh, um, damning because it happened to their witness, which was Sean Kelly, right? Like they, they've, um, they got the police report. Apparently they've talked to him, even though I don't know if they did in the official setting. They talked to him and he said, hey, listen, yeah, I'll, yeah, my story is that I seen the girl do the shooting. And then apparently he goes to meet with the prosecutor. His story was, his story initially on direct was, that hey, who shot? I didn't see. Well, who was closest to the gun? And he said, I thought the girl was the one closest to the gun okay. when it went off. Okay, there we go. And and apparently after he talks to the prosecutor, 
He's then saying, I seen the guy, the shore guy do He's the shoot. like this. Yeah, 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 yeah. And which supposedly we've never heard before, which which kind of leads into the, the and I'm wondering if that's like a, a, a practice that prosecutors do. Like, hey, listen, if I've been talking to you for months, because you, you do realize that we're we're in this era where all these guys think they're gonna outsmart the prosecutor, right? So you're telling me this whole time, yeah, of course. Yeah, no, that's what happened. I, I'm striking a deal with you, whatever, whatever. And I guess maybe this is why the federal, the federal, maybe it, it doesn't happen on a federal level, but because maybe there's not a 5K1 letter, everyone just thinks that, okay, I'm going to just get out of a few charges. It's going to be like a wink, wink, head nod type of thing. And then when I get up there, I'm going to play, right? Because I think that's kind of what the prosecutor is looking at. Like, yo, Copeland, we files, we do, I, I watch this. The the um the the prosecutors filed all type of hey Jeffrey can't get out of jail he has to have these things restricted because our witnesses are being threatened so if we're to believe that they thought they were protecting him this whole time they must have thought whatever story he was giving them was good enough and he goes on a stand and they said how old are you and he says. Old enough. <laughs> Yo, and, and the next question, he says, I play the fifth. <laughs> okay, legally now. Okay, I know I, you, you come across a lot more as a defense attorney, but let, let's think on the other side. Aren't you fucking frustrated if you're, if you're the prosecutor? What the fuck? Dude, they all wanted to kill you when you were actually snitching. Then you agreed to snitch. We gave you a deal for snitching. You're not going to go to jail for anything. And then now it's time to snitch. You're trying to get back on their side that you could not go to jail and still be cool with them. I'm, we're upset. I don't know. The prosecutors are beyond <laughs> upset. I, they're stuck with it, right? They're so pot committed. Yeah. I mean, those probably Hilton and they put their whole, I mean, how many years have been put into this? You can't get away from it at this point. You're just stuck. 